All right, guys, we are back and we are doing anterior pituitary hormones and function. And this is a lecture that you may want to go back and rewatch a couple times. Uh, really, really important lecture. And if you can have you know this stuff down, you, you should be able to answer several questions on the test. Um, so again, focusing on the pituitary gland. Uh, this mnemonic is very commonly used. Um, in the first aid book, uh, Flat Pig, and what we're going to do is just go through, you know, each each of these letters one at a time in order. Uh, there's one little point I want to make. You'll see this asterisk here next to uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone, and also notice that the M is not in the mnemonic for a reason. And that is because MSH is kind of produced some by the anterior pituitary, but it's mostly produced by the intermediate pituitary, which I didn't even know existed uh, before learning about it. So uh, that'll be the, I think it's one of the last slides in this lecture. So we'll talk about it, but just keep that in mind. Flat pig. So the F and the L are the gonadotropins. Um, they go right to the gonads. They're troped to the gonads. So FSH and LH. Uh, FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. LH stands for luteinizing hormone. And Try to think the easiest way to break this down. They do different things and act on different cells depending on if you're male or female. Um, FSH acts on the Sertoli cells in males and the granulosa cells in females. Uh, and a nice way to remember this is the S, right? FSH acts on the Sertoli cells S, and we're talking about males, and it causes sperm production or spermatogenesis. So you got you know three S's right there. Nice way to remember it. Um, so in females, there's also S, granulosa cells. Uh, so you know it acts on that. And now, LH. Okay, LH is the L's, right? LH acts on the Leydig cells in males and the theca interna cells in females. No L there, unfortunately. Um, but in males, leg cells produce testosterone. And uh, this is kind of nice because they sort of do, do end up doing the same thing in males and females. Uh, they, both, they produce androgens in both males and females. Uh, in females, they're called weak androgens. Um, and in males, it is like testosterone. And... The way to remember that is if you draw an L and then kind of like flip it upside down, you can make it look like a T. So, lady cells, testosterone. Okay, now I want to quickly go over the different cells. Uh, you will see this again with re in reproduction, so, um, but it, it can get pretty complex. So, let's start over here on the left in males. Okay, so pretend these are the testes. You have specialized cells, Sertoli and Leydig. Um, LH will act on the Leydig cells. It activates a des cholesterol desmolase enzyme. And remember, sex hormones start with cholesterol, right? So that enzyme starts a very, very complex pathway. Starts with cholesterol and then ends with testosterone. And then that goes out um, into the bloodstream to target tissues. And it also goes up to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary for negative feedback. Uh, in addition to testosterone, you know, these are some other androgens produced um, by the Leydig cells in males. Okay, now the FSH will act on Sertoli cells. 
and remember we do we already know it does sperm production uh, but it also causes release of these substances from the Sertoli cell so inhibin inhibin is important because it uh, goes up and performs a negative feedback function at the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary uh, androgen binding protein is you know an important regulatory factor and it binds androgens and then anti-malarian hormone I kind of put an asterisk next to this because um, it's really important embryology so during embryology um, in males if if they would not produce this uh, substance then they would develop you know female sex organs so anti-malarian hormone is you know one of the reasons during development that in males the female uh, sex differentiation is shut down and the male sex differentiation is uh, encouraged to happen and actually uh, the female reproductive organs are nature's default so uh, without uh, the function of these uh, Sertoli cells and Leydig cells during development you know everybody would just develop ovaries and uterus and vaginas so nature's default is actually uh, women it's pretty interesting probably because they can bring forth life but getting off topic <laughs> uh, granulosa cells in females so in females on the right here we have an ovarian follicle uh, LH remember binds theca interna cells and it I'll just put a quotation mark there because it really does the kind of the same thing as it does in males and you end up producing uh, weak androgens granulosa cells are a little bit different so when FSH binds granulosa cells um, they activate an aromatase enzyme that converts androgens to estrogens so the order of things as we understand it is uh, you know there's cholesterol to androgens dude um, those androgens can diffuse out of the theca interna cell and into the granulosa cell way that where upon stimulation by FSH they are converted to estrogens sorry I spent way too much time on that slide <laughs> okay now the A in flat pig ACTH stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone and if we start from the top right the hypothalamus remember releases corticotropin releasing hormone come on okay corticotropin releasing hormone which goes to the anterior pituitary stimulates it to release ACTH ACTH goes to the zona fasciculata and zona reticularis of the adrenal cortex uh, we will discuss this again so don't worry about it too much but there are three zones in the adrenal cortex glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis um, the zona glomerulosa as you hopefully already learned is under control of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so ACTH does not uh, regulate that zone at all but the two lower zones the fasciculata which you know produces glucocorticoids mainly cortisol and the reticularis which um, is another site of sex hormone synthesis and they're usually considered weak androgens they are weak um, sex hormones because they're not as biologically active um, so because of that if you have a pituitary adenoma that secretes ACTH 
um, it would have no effect on aldosterone levels, right? Because same reason I just talked about. The ACTH only hits these two parts of the adrenal cortex. Uh, what else? What else? Okay, so cortisol is released, you know, from all from the simulation of ACTH, uh, and then, as you can imagine, and you'll see everything does this, cortisol goes back and inhibits the further release of CRH from the hypothalamus and inhibits the further release of ACTH from the anterior pituitary. Okay, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. As you can imagine, it acts on the thyroid gland to stimulate thyroid hormone. And remember there are two of these, triiodothyridine and thyroxin. It's T4. So to just review the whole process, remember we have thyroid releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, which activates or causes the release of thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary, which goes to the thyroid gland and uh, we'll talk about the synthesis later if we have time, but anyway, causes synthesis and release of T3 and T4. And to simplify it, it does that by causing iodination uh, or adding iodines onto the molecule uh, to make the you know, T3 and T4. When the T3 and T4 are released into circulation, thyroid hormone acts at a ton of different places, central nervous system, um, digestive tract, skin, lots of places. Um, but then after going to its target, or some go to their target tissues, uh, and then they both can also act in a negative feedback. Uh, function. Something kind of, well, actually, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about the thyroid gland in a little more detail later. Okay, now the P in flat pig, prolactin, uh, it acts on the mammary gland and the hypothalamus. As you can imagine by its name, in the mammary gland it causes milk production, and, and in the hypothalamus it inhibits or suppresses the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone and if we go back here gonadotropin releasing hormone is what causes the release of these guys um, from the anterior pituitary Okay, so let's see if you can answer some, some tie-ins here, some tie-ins between different uh, layers of the system. Uh, do you remember what dopamine does to prolactin? Sorry about that. I don't know if you guys could hear that. My phone's going off. Um, dopamine inhibits prolactin. Remember, the other name for it is PRIF. Prolactin release inhibitory factor. Okay, the tie-in with TRH, kind of a giveaway because it says it right here. Um, but TRH kind of does the opposite of prolactin. It activates or you know, stimulates prolactin release. Uh, what about the tie-in with antipsychotics like uh, haloperidol? Okay, you should all be thinking that antipsychotics block dopamine, which decreases dopamine, and then because of decreased dopamine, you remove 
an inhibitory factor, right? This is similar to those neuropathways. So that means prolactin is going to be increased. Um, so to kind of take it into a third order type question, um, because the antipsychotics block dopamine, uh, that results in higher prolactin levels. What would happen to GnRH in somebody taking antipsychotics? You know, theoretically, I don't know how often it happens, but it could inhibit gonadotropin releasing hormone, um, which means less FSH and LH. And then you can get things like infertility, uh, you can get erectile dysfunction, you can get uh, irregular menstrual periods, and all those things happen when you have low levels of gonadotropin releasing hormone. And this is kind of some of the stuff I was just talking about, uh, but in a situation where you have a prolactinoma, and all that is is a tumor of the pituitary that secretes a prolactin, uh, and they can also see these same symptoms in a situation like I talked about in the last slide of high prolactin levels in the blood or hyperprolactinemia. Uh, so these types of questions you know, right here are uh, how I want you guys to be thinking by the time we're done with this class. Because if you can, th these are like classic board questions. Say, like, what's the reason for one specific symptom? So let's go through and you know, practice that. Uh, what's the mechanism for the, uh, the infertility, the amenorrhea, which is um, not having menstrual cycles, and the erectile dysfunction? And uh, hopefully you can answer it because I just said it on the last slide. If you have high prolactin, that means decreased gonadotropin releasing hormone. And as you can imagine, the gonads do not get stimulated by FSH or LH, and you can get these reproductive symptoms. Uh, what about the mechanism for the galactorrhea and gynecomastia? Uh, it's a pretty direct mechanism, right? Because prolactin acts on the mammary gland. So that's a prolactin direct effect. It rhymed. Okay, what about the mechanism for the bitemporal hemianopsia? So these people uh, can get bitemporal hemianopsia, and that's just due to something called mass effect. And it's really just the anatomy of the situation. The uh, pituitary, if you remember uh, from neuro, hopefully, uh, sits right on top of the optic chiasm. So you can imagine, in the case of a pituitary tumor, and these prolactinomas can get really, really big before you start seeing symptoms. Uh, it'll start impinging on that optic chiasm, and they'll get all these mass effect symptoms. Um, like visual field deficits, headache. Um, I forget the reasons for this. Uh, oh, it's because of, this is because of low GnRH levels because you need, you know, testosterone in, in males and estrogen in females for uh, puberty. And this is what I wanted to talk about last time. Uh, this is a case of hypothyroidism. And in hypothyroidism, you will see an increased TSH because you have low T3, T4. Uh, because you have low T3, T4, you lose the negative feedback upstairs. And then you have increased TRH, right? which causes increased TSH. And uh, because of the high TRH levels, 
What does TRH do to prolactin? Remember, TRH causes release of prolactin. So that there's a tie-in between hypothyroidism and uh, these amenorrhea, galactorrhea, and um, with those symptoms because of high, the high prolactin levels caused by high TRH. So I hope that makes sense. There's a lot of different connections in the endocrine system you can make. And now the, the G in flat pig, growth hormone. Uh, growth hormone, well actually, let's start up here at the hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamus releases growth hormone releasing hormone and it travels to the anterior pituitary through that portal system of veins. Anterior pituitary releases growth hormone and then it travels to the liver. It's a beautiful liver. And causes release of IGF-1 from the liver. And IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor 1. And uh, just like insulin, growth or IGF-1 is an anabolic hormone, right? It builds up tissues, um, specifically muscles and bones. IGF-1 can then act as negative feedback upstairs. Uh, there's also a tie-in to insulin. Uh, growth hormone decreases tissue sensitivity, sensitivity to <coughs> insulin. So another way of looking at that is normally in a healthy person, a higher blood glucose level should cause the body to stop producing growth hormone. Um, but if you have too much growth hormone, and it's almost always going to be from a pituitary tumor, then uh, you'll do something called an oral glucose tolerance test. Basically, you just feed the patient glucose and then monitor uh, the growth hormone levels. And if the high glucose levels do not stop the body from producing growth hormone, then uh, you know you should probably be suspicious of a growth hormone secreting tumor. Uh, now what this looks like in adults is called acromegaly and uh, you have like a very pronounced jawline, a big thick blockhead and uh, do you, I don't know if you remember this but there is a big controversy controversy in many sports but I think baseball is famous for players using HGH human growth hormone okay so that's what the what this is basically and as you can imagine it has has some desirable effects in, in muscle growth uh, but also has a lot of side effects in kids and this is kind of interesting uh, if this happens you know during puberty it can cause gigantism in kids because you have too like way too much growth hormone and <laughs> the main reason for the gigantism is uh, the bone growth. So the growth plates in the you know epiphyseal plates of the bone, they haven't closed yet, right? So if you have growth hormone just constantly st stimulating bone growth, you can get gigantism. And this is a teenager with gigantism. It's like massive. And then this is my current theory that Joe Rogan has acromegaly. Just look at that head there, and then look at it there. I don't know. Looks like acromegaly to me. MSH, finishing up with MSH. Uh, remember, it's not a true anterior pituitary hormone. It is produced some by the anterior, but more so by the intermediate pituitary. Uh, it's produced from a precursor molecule, which we'll talk about on the next slide, and uh, it stimulates melanocytes, and melanocytes produce and release melanin, which is obviously responsible for the different uh, colors in our skin. Uh, not only you know moles and birthmarks, but uh, 
Oh, what else is it called? Let's see. Albinism. Albinism. So if somebody doesn't have this, it can, you, can, uh, you can be albino, right? Now, palm C, really, really interesting molecule, and uh, this is very high yield uh, situation to be aware of. You'll see it, probably will see it on practice questions for boards and things like that. Okay, now, synthesize in the anterior pituitary. There are at least four different cleavage sites represented by these little lightning rods, but I was reading, and there could be like, 8 to 12 cleavage sites uh, and you can end up making as many as 10 different biologically active peptides. Uh, some of the most you know, well studied ones from cleavage of this molecule is ACTH, uh, MSH, and opioids, specifically uh, beta endorphin and something else called named Teflin. So really interesting, the, the, the tie-in between uh, the stress axis, right, cortisol, ACTH, and, uh, and opioid synthesis, and uh, melanocyte-stimulating hormone. All right, which of these hormones is not released by the anterior pituitary? Is it ADH, FSH, TSH, prolactin? or growth hormone. I'll give you a second. You should be thinking A, antidiuretic hormone. Uh, which nucleus of the hypothalamus is ADH made in? Supra optic nucleus. All these other ones made in the anterior pituitary. Okay, which of the following is correct? ADH from the anterior pituitary goes to V2 receptors of the kidney collecting tubule. FSH from the anterior pituitary goes to the Leydig cells of the testes. Uh, TSH from anterior pituitary to the parathyroid glands. Uh, we already know that's wrong, right? Because the thyroid glands. Uh, prolactin anterior pituitary goes to the hypothalamus to inhibit dopamine or growth hormone goes to the liver to stimulate IGF-1 release. If you want to pause it and answer it, you can. The answer is E. All right, okay, so why is A wrong? ADH is not from the anterior, it's from the posterior. Otherwise, this would be right. Uh, FSH acts on Sertoli cells. Remember the S is S and sperm production. TSH goes to thyroid glands. Uh, prolactin, oh, this is opposite, right? Dopamine inhibits prolactin, not prolactin inhibiting dopamine. Wrong. And this is uh, a summary table of the hormones and their functions. And that's it for this one. Thanks for sticking with me.